Next thing we need to launch now is a program called Osculator. Basically, the OSC messages that are coming from Murmur don't communicate with Ableton. Ableton only understands MIDI, so we need a bridge or some type of translator to translate these OSC messages into MIDI. So we'll go ahead and we'll launch Osculator. And I'm going to open up a file I've already created. Just call it iPod template or a DJ template. Close this. Uh, and you'll notice based on the image I showed in the preferences, the port number is the same as the port number shown in the preferences. So as I move sliders around now, and as I toggle these push buttons, you can see those little green lights lighting up. Basically what I did was I would touch a slider, one of these lines would show up, I would go ahead and give it an event type, all of these need to be MIDI CC, and then I would just assign a value uh, sequentially starting with the first thing I moved until I went through all, all of the sliders and all the numbers. Once you have that, go ahead and launch Ableton. And I'm just going to open up something I set up earlier today. Set up two audio tracks, each with an EQ3. Basically just a super simple DJ setup. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention is how we actually set up Osculator and, um, and Murmur in your preferences. You'll see the input and output actually show up now in your MIDI sync preferences and you want to make sure um, that the input and the output are both tracking and uh, both track and remote are on. But you'll notice in MIDI preferences, basically I went through, I touched just like regular MIDI Learn, I touched each one of these, I moved the slider on the iPod, and it automatically learned each one, and then you can go ahead and obviously set the settings. So uh, I'll try and get a video of this if I can, but uh, obviously you can, you can now see the sliders, sliders moving. Uh, let's see which EQ we're looking at here. high, low, medium, and this is all coming from, I've got the kill switch set. Something actually seems kind of screwy. It's, it's not the same template as it was before, so you know what, let's actually remap just to show you. So, audio one, channel one, let's change the fader. Audio two, change the fader. Audio one, we're gonna go ahead and relearn each one of the EQ settings. And actually here I'm just gonna get rid of those. Do the same thing on the other channel. We're gonna go ahead and modify lows, mids, highs, and basically all I'm doing is just touching each one of the faders uh, on, my, on my iPod screen. And here's the kill button that I created. These will get rid of. All right, so this is just to show you that everything is working. We move the volume faders. See that's working. And if you check out the EQs over here, let me move this over. Got the low, mids, highs, and even the kill button is uh, killing bass. Uh, so everything seems to be working. So pretty cool. It's just a pretty simple way um, using free or very, very inexpensive uh, software to help you control stuff with your iPod Touch. And the coolest thing about doing this is you can create your own interfaces and remember it gives you the option of four separate banks so you can have one bank to control faders and EQs, you can have a separate bank for um, effects, you can create a monom like you know, drum machine bank, all sorts of stuff. So I just figured uh, I was looking for something on YouTube that would help me do this and I didn't find it so I figured I would make one for you guys. So I hope you like it and uh, 
Any questions, let me know. And if you guys create your own templates, you can actually download uh, additional MMR files, murmur files, from uh, a URL, which I'll show in an image. So if you've got, if you make your own interfaces and you want to share with everybody, leave a comment and leave the link so that uh, the community can download it. Thanks.